The Aeolian Islands rise from the Tyrrhenian Sea 15 kilometers north of Sicily. There are seven main islands and six seamounts. Following a short sea voyage, the field party landed safely on Volcano, the southernmost of the Aeolian Islands and one of the only two active volcanoes in the island arc. Volcano is the type location for the Volcanian eruption style and gives its name to the word volcano. As the group ascended the northern flanks of the Fossa Cone, views across Volcanello and the Channel Tulipri opened up. The route up crosses the grey scoria of the lower slopes and then higher up onto the compacted pinkish brown ash from the 1888 to 1890 eruption. The base of the island lies one kilometre below Datum. Volcano consists of four subaerial volcanic centres that migrate south to southeast to north to northwest. The composite volcano is approximately 500 metres above Datum and covers some 21.2 kilometres squared. The fossa cone started forming in the upper Pleistocene. The 460 metre wide and 175 metre deep crater was the location of the 1888 to 1890 eruption which produced 5 metres of pyroclastic material at the summit of fossa. The northern rim of the crater is marked by a linear field of degassing fumaroles. Fumarole gas temperatures exceed 150 degrees Celsius. Panarea is the remains of a summit rim of a volcano that appears to be connected underwater with Stromboli, which lies some 45 kilometers to the northeast. 50 kilometers north of Volcano is Stromboli, which towers 924 meters above Datum. The island is relatively small in area and this endows it with a pyramidal morphology. This is the Scarande Fuco, a 500 year old landslide 700 meters long by 2 kilometers wide. Currently, three vents are degassing at the summit and episodically ejecting spindle type bombs, the result of a more fluid magma than that found at Volcano. The field party witnessed a number of Strombolian style eruptions. The awesome scale of Stromboli is even more impressive when you consider that 98% of the volcano lies below datum. It is thought that the base is some 2 kilometers below sea level. On Lippery, the group visited a number of sites around the island to look at exposures. At Porticello we saw great exposures of pumice and obsidian in various stages of devitrification. The group spent some time in this quarry searching for great specimens of obsidian. From this vantage point at Cotrochi, we could view the island of Volcano and could clearly see the fumarole activity at the rim of the fossa cone. In these deposits we can see small volcanic bombs that have been ballistically emplaced into the soft beds of Ash and Lipoli. A short journey by cable car and four-wheel drive bus delivered the field party to the Torre del Filosofo. At 2,920 metres, this is as far as we were allowed to go. Here, the mist, degassing fumaroles and vents reduce visibility down to metres. Despite the presence of snow, in places the black scoria was warm, even hot to touch. 
At over 40 kilometers across and 3 kilometers high, Etna is the largest continental volcano in Europe. Etna has been active for at least 500,000 years. The current stratovolcano is known as Mongibello and is built on a series of previous volcanic complexes. The group explored a series of flank craters during a circular walk on the southern side of the mountain. Okay, well, we appear to be at the um, near the summit of Etna. We're actually on the um, the crater that erupted in 2002. So that was the one that erupted for about three months, and it's constantly um, ejecting steam from that fumarole all over there, as you can see. Um, that's probably the steam that we see from the airplane, actually, when we leave Catania Airport. Activity tends to be strombolian from the crater vents and effusive from the flanks of the mountain, particularly the Valle de Bove. The composition of Etna's lavas is consistently constrained between alkali basalts and tracky basalts. They are normally porphyritic with thinner crystal plagioclase felspar, clinoperoxine and olivine. This field of volcanic bombs was created by the 2002 eruption from the southeast crater. On our descent from Etna, a volcanologist from the Etna Observatory reported that the mountain was likely to erupt in the next few days, as the mountain was swelling and seismic activity had increased. Mount Etna erupted from the southeast crater just after noon on the 15th of November, three days after our visit. How much energy is in this mountain? <laughs> Thank you, Paul. And Mary. No, and Mary. It's, no, it's, it's the Paul and Mary show. <laughs>